has its own style. It's where it's not way out there, it's not crazy, it's just, it's just to the point, clean, and has great perspective. He's gonna to spend the time to figure out how he can get it more precise, more detailed, look better, come across better, and he's already doing it. He's got, you know, all these different things that are going on. And I think that's his art, you know, his art is kind of being involved in all these things that he's passionate about. And I don't see any one of those things drawing him away from the others. So I think that art will just have to be sort of a layer on top of all those things for him. Hi, I'm Steve Caballero, and I'm an artist. I did a lot of uh, art classes in junior high and high school and uh, you know, I used to draw as a little kid as well. At a young age, I was going to his house and stuff like that. And I want to say even back then, he was always kind of like doodling and sketching and doing things like that. We found common ground in skateboarding, but we also kind of found it in art, which I think is pretty cool. Steve's style is so smooth and fluid, you know, when he's skating and you see a lot of that in his artwork. It's just, you know, real clean and uh, easy to look at and kind of pleasing to the eye. And It's way different than a lot of other artists. Uh, he doesn't obviously pick to one type of style, but you can also tell that it is his work due to like the way he paints and does his strokes and his usage of color. What he's doing now is amazing because like I said, it has movement now, it has flow. He has that drive to learn, to, to, um, to soak things up, to listen, um, and to actually kind of take that knowledge and go and apply it. For me, when I'm trying to learn something, I like to try to make as less mistakes as I can. So if I can get all the information and the wisdom from a pro who's doing it and, and I can see his results, then I just kind of pick their brain and kind of cut through that whole process of like learning and uh, falling on your face, not knowing what to do. He's going to surround himself with people that are good and he's going to take from all that. It, he did it with skateboarding, he did it with something as, it sounds funny, RC car driving or like anything he gets, playing guitar, anything he gets into, he gets into it. You know? He's just growing super fast as, a, as an artist, you know. He's still looking at other people's styles and mimicking other styles and then adding his own flavor or his own idea or content to it. But that's the kind of craftsman in him, you know. Just like as a skater, he's a craftsman with a skateboard. It's like he's, he's so precise. Every time I go to art shows, um, I get inspired, I'd go and buy a new sketchbook and I'd start sketching it and doing all these things and then I'd forget about it and I'd go to another art show and then I'd be back at the store buying another sketchbook. So I have a ton, tons of sketchbooks that aren't finished. <laughs> they're like, they're started and, I, and then you get to halfway through and they're a bunch of empty, empty pages. But um, recently I've been kind of like going through those sketchbooks again because I started this new thing. Um, called the uh, sketch of the day on Instagram. He posts like these daily sketches of just every day does a different drawing and I'm always impressed with just kind of, you know, I think he probably whips them out pretty quick and they're, they're always like really awesome looking like they could almost be like a finished, you know, graphic in themselves. I've been slowly filling those sketchbooks back up again. <laughs> at uh, Stevie's house, I, I go directly for the toy room and I just work my way, my way around just to see if there's something that I, I haven't seen. You know, there's always like a little Planet of the Apes guy in the corner, like I haven't seen him yet. Those kind of collections don't just get put together overnight. <laughs> That's just a massive, massive amount of time of collecting and, and dedication to getting those collections. Key influences in my art is basically my life. You know, things that I surround myself with. As you can see here, I have a lot of toys in the background. I feel like sometimes when he gets like a block in, in uh, making art, that, you know, it kind of looks over at the shelves of all the characters he's collected and it kind of motivates him. I'm sure he draws a lot of influence from a lot of places like I do, you know, but it's nice to have that, that collection that you can just, you know, draw influence from. 
So there's painters, illustrators, graphic designers, pinstripers, all these different folks that have been part of his different cultures he's lived in and been interested in for all his time. And I think their influences have come out in his work. One connection leads to another, you know. Maybe one door closes, but another one opens. So I like to put myself out there and I think the reason why I've become such a successful artist is because I, I've had done the work, I've, I've participated, um, and I've done things that I probably would normally say no to. What I've seen him do within a small period of time, I can't even imagine where this dude's going to go 20 years from now. I mean, I can't even, I can only see this guy doing big things. He just seems to be kind of getting better and better too as, as time goes on, you know, so. It's never too late to keep learning and be a better artist. He's a self-motivator. He doesn't need any, like, <laughs> he knows what he wants to do and he's doing it, you know, just keep doing it, 100%, you know. share different ideas with different people and work with different artists and um, that's been <clears throat> one of my um, greatest joys is just uh, all the friendships that I've developed over the years um, trying to learn to be an artist um, and that's what it's all about man it's all about making friends and, and sharing your love and the same passion that, that you have with something mm -hmm.